Well, today we're going to talk about what is SETI, which is kind of a strange thing to talk about because if you don't already know what SETI is, I'm not quite sure why you're watching this video, but I'm going to tell you anyhow, and it won't take very long. SETI is a generic acronym that stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Now, this isn't quite searching for life in space. I mean, the assumption is that any intelligence out there is, is alive or, or was alive, but it uh, doesn't include looking for life on Mars, for example, which is a search for life in space. So we're not talking about microbes on some nearby world or on a moon, anything like that. We're talking about looking for intelligence. And how do you do that? Well, it's very, very simple, very straightforward. Frank Drake did it for the first time in modern history uh, in 1960. He used a big antenna in West Virginia and he pointed it at a couple of nearby stars hoping to pick up a signal. Now, if a signal comes in, and it's not like the kind of signals we get from natural objects like, like quasars and things like that, well, then you can assume it was sent by a transmitter, was made by a transmitter, and really only intelligence makes transmitters. You will notice this if you have any pets around the house, you know, like budgies or dogs or cats, and none of them will ever build a transmitter. So that's what SETI is. Now, I, I do point out that it is generic. It's a generic ask, uh, acronym like MSG. Right? MSG just stands for monosodium glutamate, but it isn't referring to any particular brand of MSG, it's just generic. SETI doesn't refer to any particular group of scientists, just the endeavor altogether. And we continue to do what Frank Drake did in 1960, try and find radio signals from some other world. But that's not the only kind of SETI. There's also something called optical SETI, where we try and find flashing lasers, because that makes sense as a signaling mode too. Right? We're not doing very much of that, but that's increasing all the time. I get emails from people who say, well, why are you looking for flashing lasers or radio waves? Why aren't you looking for gravitational waves or, or neutrinos or some other way of signaling? Well, you could do that. And those kinds of signals do travel at the speed of light, so they're pretty fast. But it's very hard to produce a gravitational wave. Even if you're a Klingon, I mean, you've got to, got to take a big thing like a star and shake it around. And you can't shake it very fast. Whereas, in fact, if you want to send a lot of information, whatever you're doing has to be rather rapid. So uh, it still seems like radio waves and light waves may be the best ways of signaling anyone. One last idea for doing SETI is to look for artifacts, right? Just big things that very advanced societies might have built. Things that could be on the scale of a, a solar system or maybe even a stellar system, a bunch of stars lining up or s stars on a grid or, you know, giant Dyson spheres. All these things, all of that counts as SETI. Now, if you know more about this now than you did before you started watching this video, <laughs> I'm surprised.